Hello friends, welcome back to Random Hearts. Today we're going to do a quick garden tour and show you some of the things that are changing out in the garden. Um, it has been approximately a month since our last garden tour and we are in mid-September right now and we still have not frozen. Uh, we are well past our first frost date, so we are living on borrowed time right now and even though I am grateful for that borrowed time and the extra extended growing season, I know that that can change in a blink of an eye. And so I am going to take some of my produce today out of the garden. Even though it might not be completely ready, I am getting very nervous because we have had some temperatures in the upper 30s. And um, like I said, things can change pretty rapidly here and a 10 day forecast can look lovely. And then all of a sudden a day later, it has changed completely. And so uh, living in Wyoming, we just know those things can happen. And I do not want to get caught with all this produce I've got out in the garden and have a frost. And so I'm going to pull as much as I can today. And maybe over the next two days, this might extend into a two day video. It is actually getting fairly late tonight already. I did work this morning. And so I would have loved to have been out taking care of this earlier today, but real world job. I need to do that. And so we'll go ahead and um, harvest some things out in the garden. We need to do some bed maintenance. I've got a couple of beds that are no longer producing. The plants that are in them uh, need to be pulled. I also have garlic bulbs on order and um, those should be here within the next two weeks. And so I need to get the bed that I want to put those in um, prepped and ready for them so that we are ready to put them in the ground as soon as they arrive. And then uh, I think that's about it. So we'll do some harvesting, some bed maintenance, and I'll take you on a quick garden tour at the same time. So let's get outside. All right, so let's go ahead and take this zucchini here. We've got a nice big zucchini, but that is the only zucchini left on that plant. So this plant has got, I believe this is um, powdery mildew. I'm gonna go ahead and take this plant out. Um, I do think I wanna do this with some gloves. I've had problems in the past with um, getting scratched up. So I'm gonna grab some gloves. All right, I got my gloves. We're gonna get this out of here. I'm just gonna cut this plant off right at its base. And I'll go put that in our recycling bin. All right, well, let's get some of these green beans off of here. We've got a few. Not all of them are ready yet, but we'll get the ones we can. This is my second harvest on the, well, actually, this is the second um, production on these plants. They've already flowered and done their business once. And they're on our second flower, which I've never had a growing season where that is possible. So this is pretty unusual for me. Let's go ahead and pull these beets out. I know that they're not going to be very big. We had a few that were not big. But I'm going to go ahead and cut their tops and bottoms so they're ready to go inside. And I would not be surprised if some of these didn't produce anything like that one. So I'm just going to clean them off real quick. Clean up there. I did not actually grow a lot of beets this year. And so um, anything that's in the ground will probably just cook up and eat. I don't plan on saving them. Got another one right here. Good size. Just cut the end off. I do not eat the beet greens. I know you can, but I do not. I don't care for them. Now it looks like some of these did better than others. Um, kind of looks like the mid row did better. Not sure how that is working. And I've got a spider web in front of me right here. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. I keep putting my hair in it. Look at that. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. 
We got a good one right here. This will be nice. I think we're just about done here. We've got enough for one meal, that's for sure. And I'm just going to leave the beet greens in here. I'm going to let them decompose in this bed. See what we can do with that. Um, I might have to break them up and chop them up a little, but that's it. I got the beets out of there and that is what we got. All right, so let's move on to this bed. I've got a couple of jalapenos in here I want to take. And we are going to get all of the onions out of here. I actually am going to get rid of this jalapeno plant. I think I'm going to go ahead and chop that one off at its base. Uh, no, we'll just take it out. It wants to come out anyway. So we got that jalapeno out of the ground. I'm going to go ahead and get this one. You can see this one finally started to produce. I've got a pepper right here. I've got another one back here. So I'm actually going to leave these alone and let them do their thing. I've got three of them. I'll watch the weather carefully because peppers do not like cold temps. So I will watch that one very carefully. But we're going to go ahead and take all of our onions. We'll get these out of the ground. Looking very good. They're already starting to flop pretty hard. So I definitely want to get them out of the ground. Look at that neck. Very floppy. Pretty good sized onions. I do want to dry these. So I will get them set up in the garage. I did not grow a ton of onions this year. This was my first time growing them. And so I wasn't sure how I was going to do with it. So I didn't want to make an entire bed of onions and then find out they don't grow well. Yeah, see, you like that one. Oh, boy. We'll, we'll cook that one up with Jenner. That did nothing. I kind of think we'll have a few of those. Yep. Some of them are better than others, definitely. All the same variety though. This was Frontier from Johnny Seeds. So, and I'm just throwing those out on the grass right now. Okay, I think we got them all. All right, so I'm also going to take the kale. I took two of the plants um, a few days ago and froze those up. I'm just going to cut them right at the base. And I might show you how I process those. So I'm just taking these off of their stalks. I'm putting them into a bath of cold water and I'm going to leave them there for a little bit so they can soak. I want to get off any bugs or um, debris. We do have a tree right above these and so um, I want to make sure there's no debris. I want to clean them really well. I will wash them two times and then um, we'll cut them up and I'll show you how I take them apart, chop them up and get them ready for the freezer. So we'll just let those soak for a few minutes. All right, my friends, these guys right here are the reason we need to make sure we are soaking our kale and washing it thoroughly. So I do grow organically, and so these guys are all over my kale. 
And this was what I found after the first wash. So my plan is to wash them a second time. If I get any more, I will wash them a third time. These are cabbage worms. So they love kale, they love broccoli, they love cabbage. They're the sweet little cute white butterflies that everyone thinks are so lovely, but they can be very devastating to anything in the cabbage family. So we will make sure we wash those thoroughly. All right, this is the second time we've cleaned this. I am not seeing any floaty bugs this time. I want to get as much moisture out of this as I can so that I can put this into the freezer. Okay, I'm gonna take this over to the table and dump it out so it can dry a little more. And because we have relatively low humidity here. This should dry pretty quickly. So these have been sitting for a little while. We're gonna go ahead and take the stem out. And I just run my knife right along the stem edge. So this is all I'm losing right here. And then as I put it back, cause I will dry it one more time as I put it back, into the salad spinner. I will break it up into small pieces. You can chop this, but I don't think it's necessary. It's just easier for me to break it with my fingers. And as soon as we've got a full salad spinner, I will show you where we're gonna put that. But once we're at this point, it's fairly dry now. I'm going to go ahead and put it into my gallon size Ziploc that I have already marked. Um, helpful hint, always mark your flat gallon size or quart size Ziplocs before you put your produce in them. Because once the produce is in, it's a little more difficult to actually put the label. We're going to go ahead and put this in here, and I do think we'll just need one of these tonight. I don't think we'll need more than that. Like I said, I've got about half of this here, and yeah, I think it'll work. So we'll go ahead and keep working on this, and then I'll show you what we've got in the end. So we have a nice flat bag of kale that we can put into our freezer. I'll just put it in the freezer just like this, and then we'll be able to use it. So I forgot to turn my microphone on here and all I am doing in this uh, bed, this was the one the kale was in, is I'm removing all the hoops, the trellising for the peas and the pea plants. All right, so I was able to actually get everything out of this bed. We do need the kale stalks here to break down and decompose a little. And I've also got some carrot tops over here I'm going to leave in this bed. But um, normally I would turn our water off, but I think I'm going to leave it on so we have a little extra moisture for decomposition. This is the valve that I have right here. We put these on all of our beds and we can just quickly turn off our water um, so that the rest of the system can run while this one is off. But I think, like I said, I'm going to leave this on and let these have some moisture so they can decompose. I don't know if you can tell, but we are getting rained on right now. And so um, I think I'm just gonna pull a few carrots and possibly some tomatoes, and then we're gonna be done for today. All right, so we're, we've moved over to the carrot bed. I've got two different types of carrots in here, and I'm just gonna take a few. I don't wanna take all of them, but I know that they are doing very well out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple kind of thin them out a little. And we have been raining off and on all day, so the ground is very moist right now. 
which makes them easy to pull these out, but it also makes them a little muddier. So we'll just get a few of these. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. This variety did very well. I am not sure what they are. I'll have to look at my notes because my plant tag actually got sun damage, so I can't read it anymore. And I will have to pay attention to that next year. Um, not using magic marker for sure. I may use my Cricut and do a um, more permanent tag. Ah, yeah, we're getting some smaller ones in this section. So, didn't do quite as well. And I don't think I want to take too many more than this just because um, these can overwinter a little. I want to leave a few of these in here. So when I was pulling those pea plants off of their trellis, I did find a couple of small um, peas, and I am giving those to Tippy right here. She was very excited. Peas are one of her favorite things, and she just couldn't wait for me to uh, give them to her. I also gave her some of those small baby carrots that um, I felt like weren't big enough to save. She had a little bit of trouble with them because she is 14 years old and does not have a lot of teeth, but this was one of her favorite treats. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a few of these tomatoes. They are ready. These are the beefsteak style. So looking pretty good there. I think I have three or four that are ready. Beautiful. And then I do have some grape tomatoes that are also ready. So I will go ahead and get these all cleaned up and show you what we got tonight. And then I'll bring you back out into the garden tomorrow and we'll go on a tour. Good morning, friends. So uh, it is actually not the next day. It's actually been two days. Um, we have had a combination of uh, poor weather and the inability to film during that and my lack of motivation to actually get out here and finish this project. Um, so yesterday I was so unmotivated, my husband and I decided to go to a movie. So yeah, we're going to try to get this done today <laughs> before weather changes again. We do have clear skies right now, but there is a chance of rain in the forecast this afternoon. So I'm going to um, work on uh, some more bed maintenance and clearing out a couple more beds, and then I'll show you around the yard. All right, so the first thing I want to work on here is this bed. And um, we have had a lot of problems with this bed this year, not producing. I don't know if it's seed. But this is my second, actually third time trying spinach in here. It was the same seed and it just did not take. So they're teeny tiny. They've been in the ground for a while now. I'm just going to take those out. I'm actually going to turn the water off to this bed. So I've turned that valve off. This right here has finally started producing some flowers that have fruit on them. But unfortunately, it's not going to make it and it's not looking very good right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this completely out. Just get this out of the ground. I'm going to snip it like I did this zucchini and just leave the, well, the kale, I guess, and just leave that in there. Um, so this is going to go in the trash. I do think that next year I need to, I need to go, um, I need to try to put in more than one of the squash. So this worked for a short time with our cucumbers, but again, everything in this bed did not do super great. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. 
So I did speed this footage up a little because this was taking quite a while, but I am just taking out the cucumber trellis right now and then um, getting all the staples that were holding that down. I also am going to take out the marigolds here in just a minute. Those were marigolds that I started from seed, but um, I do want this bed completely cleaned out, so I'm gonna take everything out of it. I have to take the hoops off so I can actually dig in the bed. And then um, I'm also gonna take out the drip system. So I'm actually uh, pulling staples right now that hold that drip system down. And then I'll gently remove that so that I can add some soil amendments and dig. So this bed actually is a little low on soil right now. And because I don't have any soil, native soil mixed up, I'm gonna add in some of this all-purpose organic top blend and just mix this in. So normally we would actually add native soil to this bed along with the amendments in a um, certain ratio. And we would mix that up in a wheelbarrow first and then add it to the bed. But I am short on amendments right now, so really the only thing I had was this topsoil mixture. So I'm just adding this in temporarily. I will probably have to come back and add some other amendments. So I'm going to go ahead and dig this bed. Um, this bed in particular, and it may be some of the reason why things are not doing well in it, this bed in particular suffers from uh, some roots that are coming from a neighboring elm tree. This elm tree is a, um, a volunteer elm tree that the neighbor does not take care of. In fact, I don't think they've ever watered it. And so we have some difficulties with those tree roots coming up in our uh, garden beds because they are seeking a water source and that is the nearest place they can find it. So I've been struggling with this for many years now and if I were to redo my garden, I would definitely move away from that tree. We are about 15 to 20 feet away from it, but it is still a problem. So I'm just gonna continue uh, digging and leveling this out Removing all of these extra tree roots, um, I don't want them in there. They just compact the soil too much. And then um, I will level this out, get the hoops back on, and put the drip system back in. I am now adding the drip line right back to the bed. Uh, using the same staples, the same drip line, I do think we'll have to replace it next year. Our hard water is causing problems. And I am rinsing off the bed and leveling out all of the dirt right now, trying to get out any air pockets and unevenness. Um, I do have a little trouble with this hoop right here because there is a cap on one of the ends. I had a heck of a time getting that one out, but I did eventually get it. There are screws down in each pipe that the hoops sit on as a stop. All right, so we have cleaned out that bed. This one is empty now as well. I have not stirred that or added any amendments to it. I'm gonna see if that one I can use for some composting. This one is completely empty. I have reattached the drip line and added the hoops back in. I do store my hoops in there all winter long. I just find it's easier for me in the long run to store them in the bed. And then, like I said, this one I am pretty certain will have the garlic bulbs in it. And we will mulch that up with um, some wood chips and a straw. I'll need both. And then if I need to over the winter, I will actually add in a tarp if I need it. Um, so we'll just go around the garden real quick. You can see I've got a few strawberries that are coming on. Um, we did harvest green beans the other day. I probably need to check again to see if any more are ready. Zinnias have gotten very tall. Uh, my hanging baskets have had some neglect over the last few weeks, uh, especially with me at work. Uh, I just don't have the time to take care of them and they're not on drip. We do need to put them on drip. This bed right here, we're finally getting some tomatoes off of this tomato plant. Um, I cannot remember the variety on this, 
but it is very late to produce. Almost all my other tomatoes are done, and this one is just barely starting to flush out and ripen up. So I don't know if I'll do this uh, variety again. Um, I'll have to check to see what that variety was. We did take out the beets the other day, and those are starting to decompose a little. Um, I still have the cherry style tomatoes there, uh, basil, and green peppers are still going strong. I've still got those coming on. And we're actually getting some pretty good sized peppers for a second harvest. So I just need my weather to hold out. You can see I've got quite a few down in there. And if you'll remember, these are the plants that I harvested off of just a few weeks ago. So they are doing super well. This one has four fairly large peppers on it. So that is that then. I'm gonna try not to get my shadow in here. It is still fairly early in the morning. And so I'm getting some shadow, but this is the bed that we took the onions out of. And because we took the onions out, the carrots have kind of flopped here. They were kind of holding them up. This is another cherry tomato and does need some harvesting again. Um, the jalapeno peppers that are finally doing something has taken them all summer. And uh, I actually could probably harvest these at any time. I'm just trying to let them grow as long as I can. So that is our vegetable produce. Let's go over to this section over here. Zinnias, they're just glorious. I love them. I feel like zinnias are some of the easiest for me to grow. And if you'll see, I finally have some sunflowers. Look at those, just beautiful. This one right here, maybe I'll get in behind it so you can see. Yeah, got bees working on them. And they're pretty tall. So they did finally start doing some stuff. That has been great. I'm gonna take you out over here so we can look at some of these pumpkins. I am not really sure when I need to start harvesting these, but as you can see, I've got powdery mildew over here as well. I've got a ton of these little jacky little pumpkins. They are doing super well. And I do think we're going to get quite a few off of there, but I'm not sure exactly when I need to harvest. So, uh, yeah, I just love these zinnias. They are amazing. And of course, this Jack B. Little Pumpkin is wanting to like spread everywhere. This is one plant. It is just all over the place. Anyways, we'll spin around here so you can see the garden. And then we're going to come over here to this bed. Not much has changed in here. I do need to do some deadheading on my marigolds. I haven't had a ton of time and like I said I haven't been super motivated to get out here and do things just tired the Russian sage has just gotten huge
all of my daylilies are done and definitely some of them are starting to flop and show signs that fall is on its way for sure. This Plectranthus has just taken over my seating area here. I had a friend over the other day and we had to gently move it out of the way so we could sit out here and have an afternoon coffee. So potatoes still in their bags. I would like to give them as long as possible. You can see they're still flowering and uh, they still look great. They have kind of flopped over and spread out a little. And so I am getting some dye back in there, but I would like to give these as long as I can. So as long as that forecast stays healthy and happy for me, I'm gonna leave those in their bags. All of my herbs are on the downward side. They've either flowered or they are flowering. I actually harvested my cilantro the other day. I will share that video with you at a later time. I am hoping to find some recipes that use uh, coriander. And if you have any good recipes that use coriander seed, I would welcome those in the comments. These tomatoes over here still producing really well. We are on the downward stage of most of the production. You can see the plants are just starting to starting to wither up and die a little, but we've still got lots of fruit on there. This is the bed right here that I am seeing the most uh, need for cutback already. Uh, Everything in here has kind of gotten floppy. So I'm needing to do some work in this bed next. And then if we pan over here, you'll see that this new Potentella is doing very well. We are actually starting to get some fall color on our barberries. All this excess moisture we've had in the last couple of days has made almost all of our Russian sage flop a little. If we dry out, those will come back up. And then you can see my plum tree is one of the first ones to show signs that fall is on its way. We're already getting some yellow and orange leaves in there and some of the leaves have already fallen. These beds right here are basically done. Almost all of these are perennial. And so, you know, I've cut them back, but they, their second flush is not usually very good here. All of our hookahs, Jacob's Ladder, pastas. All that's doing well, just showing signs that it's been getting cooler. And look at these. I hope I can get this on camera. These are turning beautiful pink They did not stay white for very long. They took a long time to get their flowers, but these hydrangeas are just looking beautiful. Russian sage taking over over here. Those may be in a bad spot they're a little bit big for where I want what I want there.
And I am definitely planting this lemon coral sedum again, if I can find it. I love it. Low maintenance, beautiful color. Everybody comments on it. And I did get a couple more flushes of daisies. There are more on there if um, we get a little warmer for a little while. They might come out and bloom again. I don't remember what this yellow plant is right here, but I need to figure it out because it did so well in this bed. I believe it's an annual. I don't think it will come back, but just looking gorgeous. And my petunias are starting to look a little tired and worn. Almost all of them are, but still beautiful color. And it won't be long here before we start getting fall color on pretty much everything. Well, friends, that is going to do it for our September uh, garden update and tour. We appreciate you guys coming along with us the last several days as we harvested from the garden and then prepped those two beds, one for fall planting and the other for winter. We know it's on its way. We are very grateful that our temps have held out as long as they have and that we've got this extended growing season. So um, we appreciate you coming along with us. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That tells us that you like this kind of content and helps us to create more of that. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section. We try to get back to those as quickly as possible. And we just hope you're having a lovely day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.